Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. When we do these things, we understand that what the rules are of America are service. If you cannot learn to serve as a young child by helping your family, by setting the table, or pouring the milk, or better yet, putting food on the table, which is a little less risky to the carpets of a three or four year old child, then you have not taught them to serve. Children of America must learn to serve. They also must learn the safety, the sanctity, and the sanitation of food. The reason that we do this is because every human being in America has to eat. Every living creature, too, should eat. But at some point we may have to give up our animals and are tending them in order for us to be able to eat. No matter how many chickens, hens, and ducks you may have, and how much you like eating their eggs, you might be warping your brain if they are not cared for appropriately. How do you ensure that your eggs don't have salmonella? How do you ensure that your eggs don't have disease? How do you ensure these things if you're not a master, well, what do we call it, herder of those things? What I know about the geese that come and find me in the morning, that it doesn't matter where I set myself. They will find me. They will literally come in at different hours when the Lord moves them to find me. It's interesting to watch to see how they sort of partner off and team off and do different things together to create their own sort of new families. Yet at night, they all return back together at a certain space near the lake. They tend to do this sort of in two groups. They also don't mind the ducks very much. They can chase them off, but the ducks are pretty fast little ninjas that like to sneak in and get food, and they deserve that. There's about 16 ducks over at the lake. There's probably a hundred geese that come in and out with their flying in and out of that space. There are at least three red herons and one at least, possibly two, huge five-foot cranes that fish in those lakes. Telling you this doesn't necessarily impress you, but it allows you to recognize that even when the, in the midst of suburbia, even in the midst of concrete walls of all sort of shopping halls and restaurants, the nature around us lives. The sparrows do pick things up. What we as a people, though, do not like to see are the people that just throw trash on the ground. I have to tell you that I see more of that from the black community than I see from the white community. It's just an observation. If you do not want people to make those observations about you, your family, or your community, then don't do that. It's a pretty straightforward thing. If you have chosen to attack a man's life out of your stupidity, jealousy, or a need for a master-like behavior over someone that you want to turn into a slave, I feel pity for you. Because the Lord God above did not die for you to do that to anyone. Recently a woman from a church came and approached me, but what I now see through the connections of doing a little research is that it was her brother, possibly, that had been trying to watch me through his computer. And my question is why? You see, the level of abuse that I've experienced through the police departments across the Midwest is pretty high that they have a marvelous social network where they take information that is private and they turn it into secret, public, and shadow work. So when they attacked my body, when they cut private parts, when they trimmed pubic hair, when they did the things that made them say, we don't care, I have to wonder who's next. Is your child next? Is your wife next? Is your son next? Is your mom next? Is your father who's elderly next and they just want his land out on a farm? Who is next? You see, the hard part about being a police officer is drawing that line. Drawing that line in the sand between the shadow world and that of the light. But here's what a lot of them like to tout. They, a lot of them like to tout that they are part of God's house. A matter of fact, I had three officers pissing all over me at my storage unit because a black woman lied about what I was doing in my own unit. And then, lo and behold, I had a $10,000 bill because the bitch who was attacking my life passed it off to a big monstrous officer. And if I gave the count and the recount of all the shit I've endured because of an attack by a personal individual, I promise you she'd be incredibly liable. You see, people are immature a lot of times. 
they think I cannot handle this anymore but they don't ever handle things correctly what people have to do when there's discord is be willing to talk it out work it out and think it out together but the minute you involve some other person some person from your ministry some person from your neighborhood who doesn't know anything at all about all sides of the story you fucked yourself you made yourself incredibly liable the minute that you called police on something totally innocent and something totally you did you see you can't pretend that you didn't walk into somebody's life and start to literally move his life in a different direction you can't pretend that God hasn't been leading you to something with that individual and then you walk off in a new direction every single time that you played a game walking in and out of a community to show yourself to the man who loves you and then you ran away was what a game for who a game for you a game for your melodrama a game for your your ideology in life a game for your mind a game for your soul a game for your psychology a game for your vanity or was it just another way for you to harm someone and maybe God in heaven said no to that because he wasn't pleased with your play you see there is nothing about Jesus today that says in my name go into the world and harm people and evangelize the entire universe he didn't say that because you see when God split the earth when God put out the countries and the nations, he gave them all God. Now, you may not believe that if you're a Baptist. You may not believe that if you're a Catholic. You may not believe that if you're a Lutheran or a Methodist. You might not ever believe it if you're a Christian. You might believe it if you're a Wiccan, and you could possibly believe it if you're a pagan. But here's the reality. Do you even know what those words mean? And how did you choose your faith? Or were you aligning yourself with your parents' faith and never went off and did your own exploration of what is right for your soul? Because sometimes what is right for your soul is not right for your life. And other times what is not right for your life is exactly what you need for your soul. One of the hardest parts about submitting your life to the Lord is being willing to do the hard things that you don't understand at the moment in time, but a little bit later, either later in the day or later in the week, you get the value of submitting yourself to God is that prophetic skills come to you. And they literally say to your angels around you, say, this is about to happen. This comes out of the Ashkakic record. This is the plan now because other people rearranged God's plan for you. So we've drawn different plans for you. We've drawn different paths for you. We've put you on a different journey today. And it's not all about you. It's about teaching people around you not to play in God's plan. 